Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Magnus Danielson. I, I guess I pronounced well. <laughs> so Good enough. <laughs> the, the topic today I'm going to explain will not be something new for someone who's working in time and frequency from a long time. It's one by phase noise. So I'll be most precisely focusing on the type of system, the type of instrument I that I use to measure phase noise. So it's an ultra-stable quartz crystal resonator. So I'll try to test a model for the one by phase noise that exists on our system by a probability distribution de defined by Mittag Leffer. I'm Alok Pokhrel, I'm a PhD student at Femtest Institute in Besançon, France. Beginning with my work, I'll give a brief history on flicker noise and I'll present my device where I measure phase noise, of which I measure phase noise. And I'll mention the phase noise measuring vents that we use in our lab. And then I'll give information on power law intermittency and how this thing exists and is given a distribution, has a distribution given by Mittag Leffler. And then I'll finally explain my experimental resu results observation and I'll conclude by giving some perspectives. So it was Johnson who accidentally found flicker noise on vacuum tubes and after a decade it was found on granular graphite by Christensen and followed in thin films by Bernamont. And the most remarkable thing in terms of length of measurement was first of all observed by Kalanoid where to his surprise he measured flicker noise on operational amplifier for three weeks of phase noise measurement on op amps, what he found out was there was no low frequency cutoff. He went till the frequency 10 to the, mar 10 to the power minus six on Fourier domain, like you can see here, but all he found out was the slope of one by F. So I'll not be going much more on the historical part of observations on phase noise, but I'll be more precisely focusing on the recent work so far done on phase noise. I'll try to highlight some of the work. So the main objective of this slide is to show that, to resemble that one by F noise is not only observed in resonators, for example, quasi resonators or sapphire resonators, but also on other scientific domains. So for the recent development of observation of one by F noise was on Van der Waals materials in 2017. So the top half explains the observation part of one by F noise on electronic device or on other scientific domains. But the bottom part resembles the prediction of one by F noise because so far there is no uh, an actual prediction of for where this one by F noise comes from. So I'll not be ex I'll not be focusing on the all of the parts and all of the observations so far done, but I'll be focusing on the recent prediction given by Mihaela and Ott, when she, where she found that her device has one, F, one by F noise, she found on her carbon suit register. So this one by F noise comes from the, as she says, her observation says that this noise comes from electron phonon coupling. Well, these are all the scientific contribution that people do in the domain of research regarding one by F noise, so I'll not be much more focused on this part, but I'll be much more focused on the modeling part so far done in the past by a lot of researchers. So beginning with that, it was Sorti, Dupré, and Dutta and all who gave a model that the superposition of, starting from Sorti, the superposition of Lorentzian spectrum, power spectrum, has a fluctuation of frequency and which can be generalized by the random time, random relaxation time, which was proposed by Dupré. And on this formula, we can see that this formula has an activation energy at the exponential, which shows that this distribution, if there is an activation energy, then this activation energy should be equally distributed on the selected range of frequency interval. And then after that, it was Dutta and all who did a Taylor series expansion on the frequency uh, within the activation energy for a given frequency interval. And what they found that they calculated the power spectral density for that activation energy and within that frequency interval. 
And what they found out was one mass noise with alpha near equal to one in that given frequency interval, as can be seen on this figure. But what they missed so far is that they calculated the activation energy for a given frequency interval, but they could not find what happens on the lower frequency intervals. So it was Niemann and all in 2013 where he proposed a model that power law intermittency exists at low frequency. And also, in the same paper, he mentions that contrary to Kalanoid's work, where he couldn't find lower cutoff frequency going below 10 to the power minus 6 hertz, he said that there exists a lower cutoff frequency which might be equal to the inverse of the measurement time. So I'll not be focusing on the second part of his work, but I'll be more probably focusing on the first part where he says that the power law intermittency exists at low frequencies. So beginning with the work, this is my device that I work with to measure phase noise. It's a quartz crystal resonator having resonant frequency at five megahertz. So this resonator was fabricated by French Space Center in their recent project involving all the European partners. So they used the same mother crystal to fabricate almost 100 plus resonator. So they use this well-known Tierson planar convex model to fabricate their resonator. So our resonators are the part of their fabricated resonator, Re lastly. So presenting my phase noise measurement bench, we measure phase noise on pair of resonators. So how do we do that? We provide equal amount of excitation power to both of our resonators kept on a bench. It's a carrier suppression technique, so we try to suppress the effects of the carrier on our device under test. Finally, we cancel the carrier effect and we add the noise from both the resonators, from both the device under test. We amplify and we finally measure the values from a fast volume transform analyzer. So another important part of this bench is the calibration part where we inject a known frequency inside a bandwidth of resonator and then finally we calculate the value of correction factor using FFT analyzer. With value we add with the final result of the FFT analyzer measured phase noise. So this is the typical graph of phase noise measured by FFT analyzer where we have single side power spectral density on the y axis and offset frequency on x axis. So here we can see our device also has a nice slope of one by f. So for this slope, we have a value of lesion around two hertz. So when we have this value, we calculate the power spectral density of our device. So this was the phase noise measuring part. So since our resonator is a bulk acoustic wave quartz crystal resonator, we need to maintain the resonators at certain inversion temperature. So we use an oven to do that. So this is an example of a single oven where where we can have a one by slope up till 0 0.5 hertz on Fourier domain. So we wanted to have this value at a much lower level. So what we did, it was not possible by using this single oven. So we used another oven, it's double oven, which allowed us to see the one by curve for an hour of measurement around 10 to the power minus two hertz. So it was what we required. So this was the phase noise measuring part and all the application that we have applied using for the measurement of noise on our resonator. So let us come to the modeling part. This is a typical scientific journal by Niemann and all where they have two parts on their journal. The first part explains the fluctuation of one of noise at lower frequency exists. And the second part it says like, there is lower frequency cutoff and which is uh, nearly equal to the inverse of the measurement time. So as he proposes, the power spectrum will have one by F delta nature. And that comes from the power law waiting time given by this formula, where this value delta is related to the power exponent alpha by this formula, where delta equals to two minus alpha. So what we did, we took 48, we did uh, for a certain time, for a fixed time frame, we did 48 measurements on phase noise. So we computed this parameter for a range of frequency. 
Whereas he has proposed that the power spectral density of frequency fluctuation is proportional to the one by F delta. Where delta nearly equals to one, we measure by a direct fit that I'll be going to show on my next slide. So he's following proposition, pr proposition like if you have this parameter, then this parameter is random and exponential and also has a finite mean. And this finite mean, when multiplied by a common random variable of y having a parameter alpha, will be convergent to a distribution given by Mita Glessler, whose parameter alpha is nearly equal to the value of alpha component given by the power law. So what we did, we use this formula to measure, the, to calculate the value of Mita Glessler distribution involving our average value for a band of frequencies. So this is the direct fit of normalized power spectrum on the y-axis and we have Fourier frequency on x-axis. So by a direct fit we have a value of delta around 1.18 and by that we calculated the value of alpha where we had 0.82. So this was the value of alpha from a direct fit. This anyone can do I guess. So now what the another part of his work comes. So if you have a value of alpha from a direct fit, then this must be uh, synchronized with the distribution given by Mita Glessler. So what do we do? We use this formula and we, calc we plotted a histogram that shows the normalized power spectral, normalized value of Mita Glessler distribution on y-axis with the average value of m using this formula. So we plotted different values of alpha with different values of Mita Glessler distribution for that alpha. So what we come to have is that our experimental value of alpha happens to be a best fit with the value of alpha equals to 0 0.82 by a distribution provided by Mita Glessler. So now we are done. We are with a good agreement with the value from direct fit and the value that we obtain from using the Mita Glessler distribution formula. So therefore, concluding my work, I would like to say that the histogram of normalized power spectrum well collided seems to follow the power distribution given by Mita Glessler as to same as the value of alpha given by a direct fit. And on quad radar generator, nine man's model seems to support the phenomena of power law intermittency at low frequency. And also regarding a second part of work where he has said that the lower cutoff frequency exists and which proportional to the inverse of the measurement time, we are still on process to do that. So this might solve the problem of non-integrable nature of power spectral density which has been talked from far long in domain of time and frequency. So by just doing 48 measurements, we can't say that we have validated nine months model regarding the lower power law intermittency at low frequency. So we need to increase more measurements regarding use of nine months model on our system on quad crystal resonator. And also we plan to do measurement on different kind of resonator pairs. For example, good, good pairs, good, bad pairs. By saying good or bad, I mean to say like we have categorized the resonator in terms of stability value on LN standard deviation flow. So by Saying that, we happen to, I want to conclude my work that we almost tested the nine months model on our quartz crystal resonator. Thank you very much for your time.